market research, or give advice on local regulations. Uh, he will do translation, that kind of uh, innocuous uh, type of services. And in exchange for remuneration, now to the extent that the agent or consultant is uh, bold enough to actually have in black and white the remuneration he expects, then it will uh, very often be in terms of percentages. Percentages of the value of the contracts that are secured. And very often, they are not, uh, as in your typical housing estate contract, for example, or housing agent contract, linked to a cause effect uh, issue. In other words, under most of these contracts, the agent does not have to demonstrate that he was successful in procuring the contract for his principal in order to qualify for the commission. And typically these contracts simply say A will do this, no deliverables, and yet when the contract is awarded you know, on, a separate, on, on, on a separate plane if you like, uh, he is entitled to a certain percentage uh, of those uh, profits or the, rev uh, or the value of the contract. And so, the agent's remuneration may be out of proportion to the nature of the services rendered um, and a sort of person who is inexperienced in reading these contracts uh, would probably find it quite surprising to understand the commercial rationale uh, for the commission <coughs> or the remuneration as paid to the agent. Now, some agency contracts are actually quite explicit and they may actually say that the agent must exercise his personal influence over public officials in order to procure the contract for his principal. So, some contracts are simply just representation contracts and other contracts are actually lobbying contracts. In practice, very often they come down to the same thing as just what you say, but very often that is what is expected of the local representation, uh, local representative. And they are contracts for the trading, in, in, for the use of the agent's influence over people in high places, and what we call contracts, influence peddling. Are we at 10? Thanks. Now, disputes involving agency agreements fall into one of uh, three cases. The first case is the agent is claiming his commission, from his principal. And the principal then says, right, I've now realized that this was actually an illegal contract because it involved corruption. The second is, not so often, but it does happen from time to time, uh, is the principal sues the agent to say, I've just realized that all the money I've been paying you is illegal. Can I have it back, please? And you can imagine that that doesn't happen too often. <laughs> Third scenario is that the state who actually has been influenced will either rescind uh, the contract with the principal or make a claim again for uh, disgorgement of profits uh, on the grounds that there has been corruption in the procurement of the contract. Now, I'm now going to talk about uh, the case of uh, West Acre, which many of you will be familiar with. So I'll go over the facts quite fast just to remind you of what the uh, situation was uh, in this case. But at this moment, I'm dealing with the issue of corruption at two levels. At the present, we're talking about the primary level of dispute resolution, which is the tribunal at first instance, which hears the case on the main claim. There will be the second three tier, which is after you've got through the tribunal, you've got to go and enforce the award. And then there's another set of circumstances or considerations that govern. But right now we are talking about the first level, and West Acre is actually a second level case. But West Acre is just useful because it gives you the typical scenario for this kind of case. 
What you have here is a Yugoslavian uh, employer, which is actually a state agency. They make tanks, M84 tanks. They wanted to sell these tanks to Kuwait, which is um, the place where the uh, contract will be performed. Uh, they engage a company which is incorporated in Panama. Uh, and as I recall, it um, doesn't really matter what the nationality of the principal was, uh, but there was a suspicion that there was a, he had a, a passive partner who was a person very high up in the Kuwaiti hierarchy. So anyway, this company, West Acre, is the agent, the intermediary. It enters into a contract to use its best efforts to help um, the Yugoslavian state agency, which is the uh, Yugo import, to try and get um, its M84 tanks sold to the Kuwaiti Ministry of Defense. And the commission payments were very, very large. The contract was obtained, and Yugo import then refused to pay the commission. Then we say the soon. So that's the sort of uh, scenario. Um, the allegation uh, was that, uh, or by Yugo Import, was that it's against public policy because West Acre bribed or used uh, undue personal influence over Kuwaiti officials to obtain the sales contract. And what I uh, want, want to bring to your attention is actually the evidence of the owner of West Acre as to what he was doing to justify his large commission. Uh, I'm not going to read all of it, but if you can read quickly on the screen, you can see uh, the kind of explanation that this witness gave is the same thing over and over again you see in other cases. The way to small uh, community, all of us know each other, uh, and so I have goodwill. And I have good will that I can use for your benefit. And that's worth money to you. That's why you pay me this amount of money. That's the justification part of what he has of value to sell, goodwill. The second issue is what is he doing in terms of his influence? And of course, the witness is very clever. He doesn't say that he pays anybody any money. Uh, and he says, I try and convince them that M84 tanks are wonderful tanks. Uh, these people don't know anything about Yugoslavian tanks. They only buy American tanks, Russian tanks. So, it's my job to ask them to give my people the Yugoslavians to try. Um, and then, what information am I uh, getting? There's nothing secret. It's just that I'm good friends with these people and they will share with me um, things which are not highly secret but are useful commercial information that I can take back to my principals and uh, help them to make uh, a better bid. So that's the kind of story that comes out and it happens. And as those of you who are familiar with the case will remember, the legal aspects are that this is a contract governed by Cisco. And the tribunal was sitting in Switzerland. These are two very important facts. At the arbitration in Switzerland, the tribunal said, we can't find any evidence of actual bribery. This kind of contract, we are told, is illegal under Kuwaiti law. There is an express law in Kuwaiti saying that you cannot negotiate with governments using intermediaries. Um, tribunal says, that's not an offence under Swiss law. We are sitting in Switzerland and we are applying Swiss law. The contract is perfectly normal uh, from our viewpoint and so they gave um, judgment in favour of the claimant. That award then was taken to um, England for enforcement and we'll deal with that at a later stage of the election. But let me just bring you back to the overall picture uh, that's occurring in these countries. Now, look at slide uh, 14. 